guys. It's Dale Walker. I hope you're enjoying the uh, dyno video testing of the Black Widow. So I split it up in two because it's getting really long. But I just wanted to show you what you really have to go through to get accurate numbers. And of course, this is the bike without any tuning in at all. Nothing done <coughs> other than the header. And uh, we're going to be trying uh, the street core. And uh, uh, also, I pulled out my Comp 114. I had a feeling this motor may like that one, and it did. So, uh, that's what's going to be going on in the second one, and uh, showing you a lot of other things. Anyway, just keep in mind that we're here in the high desert. It's about 4,450 feet above sea level. Uh, my old dyno room in California was right at sea level or a couple hundred feet above. Of course, much better air. Uh, elevation. Um, I've found every bike I brought from California, it's, it's about two to three horsepower difference from my old room. You know, best for best type of numbers. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, that's about it. Um, I am going to continue with the bike after this uh, in the next few weeks. Kind of got to let my leg take a breather. I was on there, <clears throat> and I went through about a year and a half of prostate cancer and got through that. And now I sh jacked up my left ankle and knee, which you already know. So uh, yeah, I'm in the dyno for hours on end, and man, I just don't have the, I just don't have the steam I used to have. I started losing it after a while, so I got to pace myself. So anyway, just enjoy part two here, and then we'll be getting on the bike uh, next, pulling it apart and doing some airbox mods and this and that. And, um, like I said, it's a little bittersweet. I've got my tuner sitting right here. I'd like to just pull the secondaries, put it on there. I think I can get pretty close to the same results, but we're not doing that. We're going to go with the reflash this time. I'm going to wor uh, work with Chris Moore, and we'll probably send it back and forth a couple times, and you'll be seeing what I'm doing out there in the dyno room. So, anyway, let's get on with part two, and I hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, Please uh, thumbs up and ring the bell and subscribe if you uh, if you like what I'm doing. I'm not selling this pipe. I'm not selling the, the flash. Um, this is just uh, for me to do it for all you guys that own this bike and enjoy this kind of uh, content. So uh, appreciate the support, and we'll see you next time after the video. Thanks a lot, guys. Yet. Okay, now we're going to put the 14 street core on, and yeah, I'm estimating one, one and a half horsepower less. Alright, so uh, it's super hot right now, so can we get that changed, and we'll be right back. Alright, guys, this is the 14 street. The room's cooled down to about 77 from changing the muffler, so we'll have to do a few sessions and get it to repeat on the money. See how it goes. Here we go.
careful with my broken foot not to fall off. Anyway, did pretty good. Here we are. Need to bring that up just a hair. First pull, it made 109. That's pretty impressive for the 14th Street. And then the second one is the third one, 108, 79, then 107. It's about what I expected, but I'm surprised it matched the 109. That's pretty good with the uh, with the street core in there. That shows you my street core uh, is a good design. It's a it's a louver design. I've had several, but I've worked for years on different louver patterns and so on to make them as unrestricted as possible and still make power. All right, let me um, shut this off now. We'll let a 10 minute cool down, get everything consistent, do it again. All right guys, we've got the bike at two bars. We've got 79 degrees in here. we got to hit it right now. 14th Street again. for the street gore. Pretty impressive. We got 109 two times. We got 68 at 109, over 70 foot-pounds. 69 is at 109, and then it finally falls off where it's getting the heat in there, and it goes up to four bars with the heat around the air box. That's pretty, pretty impressive. So, that shows you it's street core works really good. Almost matches, oops, sorry. Almost matches my uh, my comp core. This motor doesn't need a giant core. Uh, air feel, same deal. Real lean up here when you first lay into it. That's clear at 2,500 RPM, and then comes comes right down in here. Air feels pretty much the same. Uh, muffler to muffler, so it's a little under 14 to 1, 13.8. 13, 5, 13. Then right here at 7 grand, it crosses over, and we're losing some horsepower here. Probably the secondary is closing down a little bit. Um, anyway, so here's 12.8 or so, and then this is where you hit the rev limit. So, anyway, that's pretty darn impressive. So, let me. Uh, I'm going to set the camera back up and I'm going to do some very light load cruising and let you see the air fuel at a, you know, middle RPM. I'll get it up in fifth and sixth and really light on the throttle, just like you're cruising along. And then we'll get up in that six to seven thousand RPM area where it's got the little blurble from the lean condition or fuel cutoff. 
So we'll see if we turn that off or not, or leave it on. I, I leaving it on makes them pop and backfire like a mother. I, um, I'm going to try to tune that out with Chris just by riching it up in that area. So let me do that, and then I'll turn this thing on, and that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so I'm going to do just some light cruise, go up to the gears, fourth, fifth, sixth, roll off of it, apply a little throttle, watch from about 4,000 RPM down, like you're putting through town, say in second or third, and watch the air fuel, and then watch in my videos when I kind of go into a corner, roll out of it, and then lightly dip into the throttle. It's got that gurgle, like a burble between six and seven gram. That's probably the fuel cutoff, but it's also really lean there. So keep an eye on the air fuel and you'll see what it's doing. That's, it doesn't duplicate the street exactly, but gives a good idea where we got to tune it up. So now you can see some air in here. Now you can see why when you're putting along at second gear, third gear through town, the thing is uh 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 because it's up around 14 and a half or 15 to 1. 
Alright? So when you're easy on it. And when you roll out if they all go lean. Okay, so you can't really judge that. Um, you don't want it overly rich with the fuel fuel cutoff turned on. It's gonna cause backing, backfiring and all kinds of crap. And uh, use a lot more fuel. But uh, yeah, that very light burble you hear when you just barely dip it back into it. That's what it does coming out of a corner. I ride right through it, I'm used to it, you know. But it's there, so we'll clean all that. But that's a good example right there. All right, well, we're gonna do maybe uh, one more pull. We'll see what happens. Well, guys, can you see me? Okay. Well, I found some more power. Uh, I never tested this on the LexTech. I also make, I'm gonna run out eventually, but I thought I'd try it. Uh, I make my COP one core that I've been making for years. That's my slightly smaller race core. So it's in between the street core and the comp, my COP two, it's in the 10 inch. And uh, so it's an inch and three quarter perforated race core, but not as big as you usually see. And the motor left it. I just made two more horsepower. So I'll make three pulls. I don't, I don't think you really tell much difference on here. But uh, yeah, instantly 111. How about that? So let's do it, and then I'll show you, show you the runs. It's been sitting a while now, so hopefully everything repeats. comp one it's the ass whipper so you remember 109 with the Lex Tech or this one here unfortunately I never tested the 14 comp one because eventually those are going to be gone I do have enough material to still make about 25 or 30 mufflers then I, I won't be making this core anymore but uh, hey they're still around so look at that so yeah I made uh, six two different sessions and it, they both made similar uh, 111 a couple 110 uh, first time it broke 70 foot-pounds of torque so it likes the inch and three-quarter 14 inch core now <clears throat> I do have some of the material left while I have it um, I could make a 10 in small numbers with this core in it I got the slightly bigger core because most of the motors are bigger than this or whatever that 
the other one that works better. Uh, this particular engine, it just is the perfect size for this thing. Um, I could make some one-off tens. They just won't have the laser mark on the back. I hate to do that, though. It's a pain in the butt. So we're talking one and a half, two horsepower, but it's mostly all up top. So <clears throat> let me show you real quick, and then I'm going to end this. I might do a session with the stock muffler too. I'm not sure. So we want. I want to show you real quick just a comparison. Um, let's see, 72. That was one of the best ones with this core. <clears throat> okay. And excuse me, I've been smoke, smoking fumes. Uh, so we got the 10 inch bad boy. One of the best pulls was number 62. Okay, let's look at that first. Can you see the? No, you can't. hate when I have to uh, do like this. Okay, so here, there's the 10 inch bad boy. Okay, there's the 14 comp one. All right, so remember red is the 14 comp one. So down on the bottom, it's, it's pretty close. Little ahead, um, the, the comp 2 is the blue coming through here, makes a teeny bit more torque. Pretty much right at about here, at six grand. They cross over, and then that's where the one makes a couple more horsepower. See up top? Two horsepower is two horsepower. Okay, now I'm going <clears> to <throat> show you the best 14 street. A couple of the best was repeated this. That was number 65. Okay, hard to tell. So let's take out the killer one. So right here, this is the this is the 10 inch bad boy. It is the um, greenish one, and this is pretty much what it did on the Lexac. The 14 Street made a little bit more coming up, and then the bad bit pulls pulls away. And in this case, <coughs> I matched it this time. So, um, these are the best two poles, but on average, the bad boy beat the 14th street, but not by much. They're pretty darn close. I tell you, my street core is a, a good core. So, pretty much you're getting the 10 inch bad boy for looks and the sound level. You're not going to tell a half a horsepower, one horsepower. So, pretty similar. Okay, and then we've got the... Um, uh, what was it again? 72. So we'll take out the, um, we'll take off the uh, 62, the 10 inch, and I'll just show you the comparison to. So there's the, um, yeah, 72 is the, the blue. <clears throat> so see, and the, then the other one is the uh, 14th Street. Okay, so the green is the 14th street, so yeah, you can see where it, about the same, and then again, uh, then again, at six grand, that's where you're getting your power gain. It just, it really loves to sing with that 14 comp one. So, that's about that. All right, guys, for the heck of it, I put the stock muffler on it. See what it does.
Yep, yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, so we're in this constant. Let's shut this down. There we go. Swirling around. The rim's constant. I started with uh, the two bars, made two with three bars. So there you go. That's what I kind of thought would happen. It's um, pretty much I beat it with my street core, if all my cores. It's close. It's still good. They made 109 on one of the pulls. That was the actually the second pull. But 108, 108. About the same amount of torque, 69 or 70. But you don't see the 109 three times. You don't see 110. You don't see 111. Okay, like my when I just pulled 14 comp one. So that tells me that the stock muffler with the bend in front, with the slightly larger diameter till it transitions down inside and the length, it just doesn't quite do what what happens with the straight, smooth. Uh, coming off the uh, mid pipe, <clears throat> and I we have a little extra length of mid pipe there before my muffler, and it likes that. So don't get me wrong, stock muffler still looks nice. I'd say it's about the same sound level as my 14 comp one, uh, something like that. But it's heavier and doesn't make the power my mufflers do. There you go. All right, guys, here's the stock muffler on the Black Widow. That's the best pull, 109, number 78. And then there's uh, one of the three pulls that made almost identical with my 14 Comp 1 core. Green is the stock muffler. So even off the bottom, I beat it quite a bit. Again, I try to be consistent, 2,500 RPM or so when I twist the throttle in fifth gear. Traction control's off. Starting with the bike, either the second or third bar on the heat gauge. So it's got to beat everywhere quite a bit. That's quite a bit right there. That's about three or four foot-pounds. And there's your, uh, your two horsepower gain, two to three horsepower, see? So man, it really likes that comp one. Now I'm going to go back to the LexTech. Trouble is I don't have this muffler with the LexTech, but let's look into that and I'll be right back. All right, so the blue number 41 is the LexTech with the 10 inch bad boy. The other two are from today with the 10 inch bad boy. So the numbers are about the same. Um, the LexTech did yeah, that could be where I started to pull. Right here it's a little ahead. But then the uh, Black Widow now with the slightly longer collector made a teeny bit more torque right in here. Uh, probably one and a half foot-pounds of torque and about one horsepower more and then they even out to the same. So it still beat the LexTech but not by much. Like I say, I I wish I would have tested the 14 Comp 1 on the LexTech, but uh, no matter. We're just going to stick with the Black Widow now, but the LexTech is right there knocking on its door. Uh, super close, like I thought it would be. I think this header makes a teeny bit more torque in that one spot, because there is about a 3 inch longer collector length uh, before the uh, last merge collector. So, that's about it. Well guys, that was a long day for a crippled. That almost fell off that. That'd be really great. Break my foot again. Anyway, so went over just about everything we can do for now. Hope you enjoyed the all the dyno pulls and just showing what's going on. So um, I think that's about it for now. So uh, if you like the video, please subscribe, hit the bell, thumbs up, all that good stuff. I really appreciate it. And uh, pretty soon, get it back over on the lift, pull the air box off, start working on that. 
I'll kind of show you how I'm coming along with that, what I do. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, take care and ride safe.